immediate symptoms of the mind and body, treating them without any knowledge of the spirit. Mm -hmm. What is true holistic healing? How does spiritual healing work? How does it help to integrate the mind and the body? What is lacking in traditional healing methods? How can we participate in this healing process? And after we've had spiritual healing, what is the next step? Hmm. So you want a lifetime of knowledge in one hour? <laughs> 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 Good. You know, I can handle half a dozen questions at the same time. Anything else? Come on, come on. Yes? Some people are suffering from various illnesses. Uh, children are born with birth defects, that kind of thing. In one of your tapes, I believe it was the one on work, uh, you said we always get what we deserve. Hmm? Any more? Garage, uh, meditation which falls short of uh, the depth of spiritual practices which, which you t teach is felt to be beneficial to the health. To health. I, I'd mm -hmm. like to hear comment on, on that. Very good. Any more? No. What you really need to know is yourself. That is the basis of all true teachings. What is yourself and how does your body relate to the mind and to the spirit which is within you? Hmm? Now, Medical science is very fast recognizing the value of holistic treatment. Good. I addressed a holistic health conference in Las Vegas about two years ago, and on the panel we had psych psychiatrists, psychologists, physicians, and quite a few others, including myself. The whole idea that man must understand today is that the body is not apart from the mind and the mind is not apart from your spiritual self. Hmm? It is one continuum and what medical science have been doing up to now is the physician will only study the physical symptoms and prescribe according to the symptoms which you have to tell him about. Hmm? Fine. So, in the physician, what is lacking is that intuitive ability to be able to form a proper diagnosis. His diagnosis is only formed upon the various mechanical tests that are taken on you hmm? to see if you have a stone in the kidney. Fine. And that he will only undertake those tests if you tell him you have a pain in the kidney hmm? or a pain in the neck. Fine. Psychologists today only probe the surface layers of the mind. Hmm? They try and dig back into the various problems from your childhood, how you have been brought up if you have been well used or abused uh, and the and all the experiences that you have gone through uh, in your youthful days in your college days in your married life hmm? and then from there they would try and analyze go through Freudian um, analysis or through any of the Jungian methods hmm? But they ignore that it is not only of the mind. They ignore the spiritual value that is associated to the mind. So, 
in our teachings when it comes to spiritual healing, what happens is this, that we do not take note so much of the body. We do not take note so much of the mind, but we teach the person through spiritual practices how to reach the source of all energy, hmm? of divine energy. And by reaching the source of that divine energy, we draw from that energy to heal all our ills. Hmm? You have created the illnesses in yourself, hmm? be they of the body hmm? or of the mind. And today's scientists do agree that all illnesses stem from the mind. Hmm? And they translate themselves into its physiological equivalent. Hmm? So, you treat a person for a headache, so the doctor will prescribe to you aspirins or any of those associated products. Hmm? And your headache goes. The headache is only a symptom, but that headache could be a symptom of a far more deeper lying factor. Hmm? And the headache or migraine, migraine would reappear, so the physician would refer the patient to a psychologist. Now here the psychologist starts studying what could be the cause of the migraine. Hmm? Right. What tensions are there, what conflicts are there in the mind that would take away these symptoms, that would take away this illness, that as far as the psychologist goes. What I am trying to tell you that all the healing procedures in the world today are compartmentalized. Hmm? If the mind, body and spirit is a continuum, every doctor or psychologist should have a total knowledge of the physical back, uh, of the spiritual background that underlies everything in existence. Now if he himself is ignorant of the spiritual background, if he himself have not experienced the force and the power of the spirit within, the kingdom of heaven within, then how can he bring that out in you to heal the illnesses? Hmm? There lies the difference and there lies the failure hmm? of today's modern medical science, compartmentalization. So, if I was running a university hmm, or a medical faculty, I would put all of them through about three years of spiritual practices even before they start studying medicine and psychology. Yes. Now, to cure oneself of any illness is very easy. Hmm? It is just undoing certain things that you have done. Now, we will agree <coughs> that the symptoms are produced through certain conflicts in the mind. And those conflicts may not necessarily be of this lifetime. Hmm? They might be hereditary or if you do believe in some form of life before death, uh, before this birth, then they could be a carryover. Hmm? You do not need to believe in reincarnation. Hmm? The most important thing is now, now, here and now. Am I living as a fragmented person or am I living as an integrated person? Hmm? And yet you could not get rid of the conflicts in your mind and I've always been telling you that the mind is nothing but thought formation. Thought formations creating itself into various patterns and 
by continuously thinking of the illnesses you have you are strengthening those patterns or <coughs> you are superimposing more patterns upon those patterns and creating even greater conflicts in your mind. Now, why does this happen? Hmm? That is the question we must ask, which is the pivotal question. Why does this happen? <coughs> the basic need, consciously or unconsciously, of man is to find satisfaction, is to find happiness. But the patternings of his own mind plus the outer environment produces a dissatisfaction and displeasure. So, here is the basis of all conflict. His very nature is that of joy. For as I've told you before, divinity is omnipresent, so he must exist in every cell of your body and brain. Hmm? So that is joy. Now here, superimposed upon this joy are the patternings of thought. Now you will ask yourself, what reality has thought got? Hmm? Is thought real? Hmm? And if it is real, if it is actual, why does it always have a changing character? Why is it changing all the time? Now you must differentiate hmm, for the purpose of this discourse between brain and mind. The brain is only an organ like any other organ of your body. Hmm? containing 12 billion cells, of which we use only one millionth part of it. The rest are dormant. So, through spiritual practices, as you awaken the cells of the dormant brain, the more aware you become, the greater, as greater awareness comes upon you as you become more and more aware the light of the inner self starts shining through more and more hmm? so spiritual practices I do not use the word meditation very much because it has been so misused and abused uh, by the money mongering gurus that visit your country hmm? spiritual practices. Fine. So, through spiritual practices, what you are doing is this, is you are cleaning the window of your mind so that the full force of light of the infinite that is within you would shine through. Hmm? Now, allowing that infinite force, that infinite power to shine through Mm? then all the patternings of the mind, though they could not be annihilated, though they cannot be destroyed, will be flooded with the light of the Spirit. Mm? And this should be the basis of holistic health. This is how your mind achieves a greater tranquility, greater peace, and that automatically would reflect in your physical being and all the deeds you do, all the actions you perform would become spontaneously right. Hmm? You do not control the mind. I might have told you this before or in some lecture somewhere. You cannot control the thought processes of your mind hmm? because with what tool are you going to control the thought processes of the mind? Hmm? Now, the mind <coughs> is as vast as the universe. Within this little block up here, 
we contain the entire knowledge of the universe since the Big Bang, since the inception of the present uh, cycle of the universe. All the knowledge is there. Hmm? And uh, with all the confusion of all the knowledge and the intermingling hmm, of the various patterns that make up knowledge, hmm, creates more and more confusion. So, man is the most confused being in this world and therefore he is the most unhappiest creature in this world. Show me one happy man and I will show you God. Now, we associate normally happiness with pleasure. Happiness and joy is not pleasure. Hmm? Pleasure is satisfaction seeking. Pleasure is more associated to gratification. Hmm? Gratification of being recognized hmm? that I am in a position and people look up at me or to me. Hmm? then you have sexual gratification. Hmm? So, you probe into the cubby holes of the subconscious level of the mind and when you find someone attractive, a desire is born in you hmm? because that mind in that cubby hole are contained all the files of the pleasures that you have experienced. Hmm? So, in your subconscious mind, what do you have? Hmm? You have a sensation and you have desire. Hmm? Sensation and desire. Now, sensations are of all sorts. Sensations are pleasurable and sensations are also painful. Hmm? And desires also have the qualities of satisfaction and dissatisfaction. So here you are placed in the position of being in conflict because you are just operating on the law of what we call the opposites. All pleasure carries the seed of pain within it, within it. And all pain carries the seed of pleasure within it. But because of this overwhelming desire in you for satisfaction, for some form of gratification, you try and draw from your subconscious mind associating it with the external environment hmm? and with this association the desire becomes more stronger and stronger hmm? and as desire hmm, for gratification becomes more and more stronger there come greater and greater obsessions and perversions. So, now you get tied up in the whirlpool of the mind. Hmm? How do we get out of this? Hmm? How do we get out of this? What do we do? Hmm? I've told you this before that everything is here and now. Hmm? And I also told you that the word nowhere, when the W is shifted to the left, it becomes now, here. So until you reach the stage of being now here, 
you will always be plagued by all kinds of diseases. Diseases means to be at this ease. Hmm? That is disease. Hmm? It does not necessarily mean heart disease or cancer or any of the other things you might talk about. Hmm? It is to feel at this ease with yourself, your body and your mind because you are living in a fantasy world of desire. Hmm? And that fantasy world of desire will necessarily require satisfaction, which is also a fantasy. So, what we teach by spiritual practices is to draw from that infinite source that is within. And thereby, if it is dark, why analyze darkness switch on the light. What great help is it going to be to analyze darkness? You want light and you switch on the light. Fine. So, through a very systematic process, through a very scientific process of meditation which has nothing to do with religion, hmm? It can be associated to religion because the word religion means to bind back. Bind back to what? Not to your desires, not to your fantasies, not to your projections, but to bind you back to your source which is within you. So, now, the mind with its various levels which we know as the conscious mind, uh, mm, which operates mostly in the left hemisphere of the brain, mm, the analytical level, the intellectual level, mm, good, has to find a greater coordination with the right hemisphere of the brain, which governs intuition and which in turn is connected to the higher level of your mind, hmm? which I call the super-conscious level of the mind, which is at the highest form of relativity. It is still not absolute, but it is at the subtlest form where you find that stillness. Now, you know the old saying, be still and know that I am God. Hmm? So, if people are taught how to find that quietude, how to find tranquility, how to be still within themselves, hmm, half or more, 90% of the world's ills will disappear. Hmm? Because all illnesses have a mental origin. And most illnesses are psychosomatic, hmm? which our psychologist friend over there will be able to tell us. Hmm? And psychosomatic illnesses can be translated into organic illnesses. So, we tackle the root of the problem. Hmm? When you water the plant, you do not water the leaves or the trunk, you water the root. Hmm? And that is how the plant grows. It is a very old analogy used by many, many teachers. But there is great truth in it. Hmm? So, today's doctors, physicians, they treat you from outward to in. But the spiritual physician or the spiritual master, he treats you from inward to out. Hmm? And because of the vast advances made in technology, we have always been incli inclined to seek outside hmm? and never inside. Hmm? 
Just study yourself, think of yourself. All the pleasures you seek, are they inward or outward? Hmm? You find pleasure in beautiful feast, right, that's outward. You want to find pleasure in seeing a beautiful scene, that is outward. Hmm? You find pleasure in being close to a beautiful woman, that is outward. Measure everything in your life and your attention is forever going outward, outward, outward. Hmm? But we have reached the end of the line and there is only one way now that all must realize is to reach inward and by reaching inward and drawing from that infinite source of energy your entire being becomes energized and there's one analogy which I love to use so much is this that if you spend half an hour in a perfume factory you will come out smelling like perfume Mm. And if you spend half an hour in the sewage plant, you know what you will smell like too. Hmm? So, the problem lies, all problems lie in the inability of man or man not being taught how to draw from inside. Hmm? So, we treat in the medical field, we treat outward symptoms and we find the causes of these symptoms either in the mind hmm, or in the body and the causes could be there. But are you really eradicating the cause hmm, or are you just shifting around the energies? Hmm? Because those impressions are there, hmm? those patternings are there, hmm? and you cannot annihilate those patternings. Every thought you think could never be destroyed. It floats about in the universe, and someone else picks up that thought that you have thought if your mind is attuned to that particular kind of thought. Hmm? You know, there's a story about illness. Four friends got together and they thought they'll play a joke on a fifth friend. Hmm? So, when he met the first friend in the morning at work, the first friend said, John, you're looking terrible. What did you do all night last night? Hmm? Yes, so tea time comes and friend number two meets John and friend number two says, Oh my God! What's happening? Did you see a doctor or something? You should! Hmm? Lunch time comes and friend number three he says, you know, you better go home. You better go home to bed. Hmm? And when knock-off time came at five o'clock, friend number four says, Oh, please, you don't drive. Let me drive you home and put you to bed. You're looking awful. Hmm? The man actually became ill that night. Hmm? He was subjected to these thoughts from outside and being subjected to this thought, he created the illness within himself. So, what does this mean? That you are a creature dependent upon outward circumstances. Hmm? When you could be dependent, you could be independent and stand to learn your own two feet by being an integrated person which is the integration which is brought about through spiritual practices with the mind, body and spirit works in total harmony. 
So, this is and this harmony. Those two words could be synonymous. If there is disharmony within yourself, you do not feel well. If there is dis-ease within yourself, you do not feel well. So, the greatest cure hmm, is this, that man is able to heal himself. How many times have psychiatrists and psychologists not consulted me on various problems of their patients? And then I look at the patient and I say, look, there's nothing wrong with this patient at all. Hmm? Give him a placebo. You know what a placebo is? Hmm? A pill filled with rubbish. Hmm? Some aspirin, <laughs> sugar, sugar, or whatever. Hmm? Yes, you take this three times a day, hmm, one each, and in two days you'll be okay. Hmm? And it works. It has worked. In many, many cases it works. Many of the medicines you get are placebos. If you want to be a doctor, you do not need to go to university to become a medical man. Hmm? At the most, there are only about 12 basic illnesses hmm? and 12 kinds of prescriptions with its various variations would be good enough for you to practice as a doctor. And that is what all these doctors do. Hmm? And I challenge them on this. Hmm? I was in Los Angeles at the home of some of our meditators. Um, Las Vegas, sorry, not Los Angeles. Las Vegas, Esti and Herb Rousseau. Hmm? So she had a phone call from a friend of hers from Texas. And um, so Esti tells her that Guru Raj is here and they start talking. And then, of course, uh, in the talk, this friend said to her, that um, my husband is very ill and the doctor recommends that he should have a operation. So ST mentions this to me. I say, you phone back and if it is possible, ask the husband to come down here. So they have their own little plane, a wealthy family. And so the husband came down. I looked at him. And I said, you do not require an operation, but do one thing, go to a specialist hmm? and get a double confirmation on it. Hmm? And the specialist told him the very same thing I did, you do not require an operation. Hmm? It is just an inflammation of something and which will go away in a few days' time. Hmm? So look at the rackets being run. Two months ago I was in England doing some courses there and there were big write-ups in newspapers where a person goes to a dentist hmm, for one filling of a tooth. So under anaesthetic the doctor filled eight teeth which were not necessary. But of course he explained the patient, look while you were under an anaesthetic, an anaesthetic you know, I thought let me do the whole job, saves you a lot of trouble. Hmm? Do you see? So, medical men that took the Hippocratic Oath hmm, have turned it into the Oath of Hypocrisy. Hmm? To serve mankind, they have forgotten that. Hmm? Yet, they serve their purpose. Hmm? They serve their purpose. Uh, a doctor cannot cure you. He can just perhaps help and expedite the cure. Hmm? So, if modern medical science could incorporate in their practice the spiritual value of the person, hmm? as I said before and to repeat again, 90% of the world's ills would go. And 
most of the illnesses comes from conflict right what does conflict do firstly it produces fear and it is this very fear that exaggerates your illness you fear that something will happen to me what will happen to my children you fear this beautiful home I've got I'm going to lose it hmm? you fear I've got so much money on the bank and I can't take it with huh? all fears 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 hmm? unnecessary fears over which you have no control hmm? yes so those fears perpetuate itself it creates greater and greater anxiety anxiety creates greater and greater stress greater and greater stress creates all the so-called negative things within us it creates in us greed and lust and avarice and covetousness why should the Joneses have a better home than mine hmm yes dissatisfaction now when we allow that divine light hmm, to pour through us all these things disappear hmm? they get they are not annihilated but they are dissipated hmm? they go back to their original elements so if you have a particular kind of fear hmm, and uh, you push away the fear with the light of the divine being within you that fear will not be destroyed but it will reach somewhere where there's a similar kind of fear hmm? therefore that is how your fears get strengthened too not only by yourself but by having that fear you are attracting the similar kind of vibration that is existing all around you and which increases that fear you see you see how illnesses work hmm? because fear is the greatest illness and then from that you start developing the sense of guilt and I've told you this before that the sense of guilt is the greatest killer not heart disease and not cancer guilt hmm? sense of guilt that is within you all the time hmm? and it eats you up hmm? you feel guilty why you feel guilty because of not what you are doing now you feel guilty for what you have done in the past what you have done yesterday hmm? so it is not the action that brings the guilt hmm? but it is the memory of the action that produces guilt hmm? and what existence or what actuality or reality has memory got hmm? it is not real it is not there it's gone it's past it is your memory of it and memory has no value whatsoever hmm? it might have certain functional values I must remember to send Auntie Mary a birthday card things like that which are non-important hmm? which is unimportant and Auntie Mary gets the birthday card and she says oh Jeannie remembered me or Joni or whoever and send me this birthday card fine but when your birthday comes and Auntie Mary does not send you a card through perhaps forgetfulness or through something then you feel so disappointed yes Auntie Mary did not think of me Hmm? although I had thought of her huh? yes, eh? you want a reward a return all the time hmm? you are centered in me 
Now, if you take the word me, M-E, and put a mirror under it, a reverse image, that me becomes we. Hmm? And when we develop the sense of we, then there's no separation and nothing can hurt you. Hmm? Because you don't feel guilty, you don't feel fearful, you don't have anxieties. For what are you anxious of? What are your tensions all about? Your tensions are about your self-preservation. Hmm? Your tensions are all about me. It is centered upon me. Hmm? Self-preservation all the time. Hmm? And what are you preserving? What are you really preserving? What can you really preserve? Nothing. For all this too must pass. We are just passing by. We are just passing by, that's all. There was this author who was also a great student of the writings of some rabbi in Israel. So the author was visiting Israel and he was very near the village where this great man lived and he thought, let me visit this man. So he went to visit this rabbi and they started talking and it's quite customary that when you go visit a holy man you n normally never go empty-handed that's a custom in the east and the middle east and all those places even if you're a poor person just a petal of a flower as an offering a little flower as an offering it does not need to be a check of a million dollars hmm? no, it's an offering it's a respect hmm? fine so this man says, uh, I was just passing by and sorry Rabbi, uh, I did bring no offering, I was just passing by. And then while they talked, uh, the man noticed that the Rabbi's room was totally empty. Hmm? And he was sitting on the floor. And so he asked uh, the Rabbi, he said, why is your room so empty? So the rabbi replied, I am also just passing by. Yes, so we live in all kinds of dreams which don't have any value. We expect too much of others and not really expect anything from ourselves. There was the, the father, he was entertaining his little daughter of six years old, hmm, six years old, and they were going through old albums hmm, and uh, they came to the pictures where dad and mom got married. So the father explained that here yeah, this is the day there's a picture of our marriage. So the six-year-old says, Oh, is that the day when mom came to work for us? <laughs> <laughs> yes. We are always expecting others to do something for us. Hmm? We don't want to do anything for ourselves. And the greatest thing you can do for yourself is to find an integration within yourself through spiritual practices which are so simple. Hmm? Everything is simple. Truth is simple. Hmm? Only we, with our thought patternings, make it so complex. We add complexities to things which are, in reality, very, very simple. I told you the other day that it is so simple to be happy, hmm? but so difficult to be simple. Hmm? Now, to get back to our primal simplicity, we have to draw from that source within. It is there, a vast reservoir 
of energy that could rid man of any <coughs> ill. Hmm? <coughs> that could rid man of any ill that he might suffer, mental or physical, hmm? where he could coordinate his conscious mind with his subconscious mind and reach the super conscious level of his mind. And that can be, no be done now. Hmm? It can be done now. You have a hotline from the conscious level of thinking direct to that area that is beyond all thought. Hmm? Beyond thought and yet enjoy thought. So the mind can be used as an instrument when you reach its subtler layers, the super conscious level, and that is the real Hmm? experience or rather the observer which the lower levels of the mind experiences now when you can become the observer hmm? when you can become the observer of all the happenings in life then nothing can touch you hmm? for then you have risen above the law of the opposites. Hmm? You have gone beyond pain and pleasure. You have gone beyond satisfaction and dissatisfaction. You have gone beyond all that into the land of joy and you are totally non-effected. Hmm? And you are doing it the tragedy is this, that you know how to do it. Hmm? When you are observing a beautiful sunset, hmm? or a spring leaf falling from the tree, gliding down to the ground, hmm? how much don't you enjoy that? There's joy in that because you are not analyzing it. Hmm? You're just seeing the beautiful sunset. You are looking. And at that moment when you really look, thoughts are gone and it is joy. But then when you try and remember the sunset, that is where memory and thought comes into play. Hmm? And then the next day you don't find a similar sunset and you feel disappointed. And the next day the wind comes up and that leaf does not glide down hmm? beautifully to the ground. You feel disappointed. Because here comparison begins. Hmm? You compare and you compare and you compare all the time. Hmm? You compare your motor car with Mr. X's motor car. You compare your house with Mrs. Z's house. You compare your clothes with Jane's clothes. You compare all the time what comparison is necessary. So what are you dependent upon? Comparisons. And why should you compare? You are unique as yourself. You are divine. You are children of God. You are filled to the brim with divinity that is only one. And when through spiritual practices you reach the super conscious layer of your mind, you'll find that all is one for there is only one mind. Hmm? And individualizations come because of these patternings, which is a different subject. Hmm? All right. So, if doctors could learn how to combine drawing out the spirit of man and allowing it to permeate their minds and their bodies, diseases of the world could become practically non-existent. Hmm? 
Now, this might be an be a exaggeration, but there would be so much less, so much less. But then the psychologists and the counsellors and the doctors will all get out of business. Hmm? Do you know one fact? Do you know one fact? that when there were less doctors in the world, there were less diseases? Hmm? Yes. And the more doctors came into being, there became, there came more diseases in this world. Hmm? Pardon? That we shall not debate upon, but it is a phenomena just to be observed. Hmm? to be observed. And of course the answer they will give you is this, that those diseases were there but not recognized by the doctors, which is not true. Hmm? Our lifestyles has become such that more and more diseases have been produced. Hmm? Every piece of food we eat, it is artificially produced. And what surprises me here in America is this. They take wheat. Out of the wheat they extract the wheat germ oil. So they could put it in capsule form and, you know, get uh, 200 times the price for it. Hmm? Then they'll take out another substance from the wheat and create that into another product. Hmm? And then what have you got left over? has no substance to it whatsoever. Now what you do is this. Then you inject synthetic vitamins into the <laughs> flower. <laughs> yeah. And then you have a big ad on the wrapper. You know, bread with added vitamin D. <laughs> Enriched. <laughs> yes, that is what the world is coming to. There were less diseases during the time of our grandfathers. Hmm? Less diseases. I tell you why. If they have to go uh, to buy something down the road, they'll take a walk and go and buy it. Hmm? Fine. Today, if we just have to go to the corner, we'll jump into our motor cars. And thank God that we don't have driving toilets. <laughs> yes, and the same thing happens in married lives too. This one fellow wanted to get married. Right. So uh, his friend asks him, I believe uh, you're on the verge of marriage, what's happening? So he says, you know, Jack, I'm not too sure. Hmm? Because when I'm drunk, she does not want to marry me. And when I'm sober, I don't want to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to list off some jokes here. Yeah. Oh. 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 So you're talking of health. This chap was celebrating his hundredth birthday. Hmm? And uh, he was interviewed on your TV station. And the interviewer asked him, what is the secret of your long life? You've reached a hundred. What is the secret? He said, it is so easy, I just keep on breathing. <laughs> <laughs> and on the same program, another uh, person that turned a hundred was interviewed. And of course, the interviewer congratulated him. Congratulations, sir, for reaching a hundred years of age. And may we see you on the same program next year again. Hmm? So the old man replies, uh, I think that is very, very possible. You look young enough. 
<laughs> Good. I think I've talked for an hour and now we can have some time for questions and answers. Ask me anything you like, anything you want to. Yes, ma'am. Would you guide the hands, Vidya? Hmm? This lady is first, I think. Yes. I understand what you say about the here and now mm -hmm. and living in the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't understand the connection mm -hmm. between that and healing and how mm -hmm. one can use the power of the divinity to heal others. Oh yes. You, you can use the power of divinity to heal others if you can be trained by a spiritual master how to become a channel. Right. Now, as I said, all healing, all problems begin with the mind, which in other words we could call the subtle body. Now, as the physical body has its own nervous system, so does the subtle body also has its own particular nervous system and various vortexes of vibrations and energies. Now, when disturbances occur in the subtle body, uh, not the proper rate of vibration or no coordination between various vortexes or blockages in the subtle nervous system, then the spiritual healer being just a channel, hmm, being just a channel, can draw to himself if he has a certain amount of integration and is taught how to be a channel, he can draw upon these universal forces, which is divinity itself, for divinity is universal and omnipresent. He can draw from those energies and direct them to the person who is not well or is ill. And by drawing upon those forces, that powerful energy, the wrongs can be righted. The vortexes of energy which are not flowing as they should, mm, vi not vibrating as they should, or uh, uh, if there is certain kind of sluggishness, all this can be righted and it must express itself uh, outwardly into its physical equivalent. Hmm? And here I've been doing some healings and you'd have people here telling you that is, it has had great effect upon them. For example, this young lady here was telling me this morning, Oh Guruji, a miracle has happened. There's no such thing as miracles. Hmm? She lost a contact lens, she was telling me, and she found uh, her daughter suggested, why don't you use the old pair? Hmm? and the old pair had been no good anymore for her. She couldn't see through them and um, uh, uh, therefore she got a new pair. Hmm? So we did a little healing on her eyes yesterday and so this morning not being able to find the new pair of contact lenses she used the old ones and she could see perfectly well. Right. So what has happened there? That by pouring in those energies hmm, we the eyes had deteriorated much, so a greater improvement took place. Hmm? Where she could use the, the contact lenses that were discarded. Fine. Now I could give you thousands of examples like these, thousands of letters on our records to tell you how this power works. You could never explain the mechanics of it. The only explanation that one could really give is that it works. The proof of the pudding lies in the eating. Hmm? And this is just a very small example how these powers can work. And you can become a healer by all means. You can if you have the potential. Now we have healers here. Hmm? Uh, Mary Kay is a healer. Uh, the right Her Reverend Dr. Herbert Bates is a healer. Hmm? Yes, and because uh, Vidya, but she's, I'm talking of local people, she's in Chicago, of course she's a healer. 
a master healer that and by profession a psychologist good um, so you see what happens there is that you get taught the techniques on how to heal and not only that a spiritual master has the ability to transfer the healing powers to people that have the potential so you first got to have the potential I was telling someone today that uh, you can't make anyone a healer like a child might not have um, a musical talent and you can spend a little fortune in getting the best music teachers and yet the child won't be a good musician but if the child has the promise and the potential then of course uh, that can be created and a person can become a healer speak to me later about it I'll give you a test to see if you have the healing ability or not hmm? okay fine yes there's much being done today in, in modern Christian religions and faith healing mm -hmm. and it's done in the name of Jesus Christ can you right. compare this somewhat to uh, the spiritual healing you're speaking of uh, I do not talk of Jesus the man I love the man but when I wish to think of him hmm, he is the Christ or the consciousness which is eternal hmm? and you can attach labels and faith healing implies that you got to have faith in the healer spiritual healing does not imply that you may have no faith at all and you can be healed because you are the channel and you are pouring in the energies so faith is not necessary at all hmm? so you can do it in the name of consciousness hmm? and people are taught how to draw upon that consciousness hmm? it could be Krishna consciousness Buddha consciousness Christ consciousness whatever consciousness is consciousness hmm? the prefixes are only labels hmm? so and that consciousness is divinity itself I and my father are one hmm? fine so you draw upon that consciousness and you can heal if you're a Buddhist you would do your healing in a Buddhist context if you wish to hmm? if you're a Christian in a Christian context right I heal in no context in no particularized context context but his uh, are you seeing because a few hands are going up and, and I don't know who's who oh. I, I think I think uh, that is and yes uh, that's okay Yes, you've answered it. Aspects of your own entity. There are no guardian angels. There are no spirits floating around. There are no other people on the other side wanting to contact you. This is pure occult bullshit. Yeah. You, you, you get taught all these things. Why not have believe if you want to or have faith uh, why not try and know God and live God instead of these little so-called spirits who as I, I think I talked about it this week that have no time for you whatsoever you might have been very fond of Auntie Matilda uh, but she might be waltzing away there she doesn't get two hoots of what's <laughs> happening to you hmm? you see you see these departed spirits they are not spirits hmm? departed souls there's a difference between a soul and a spirit hmm? a soul is the totality of you as an individualized being with your ego self that is a soul the spirit is one the Holy Spirit is one hmm? 
left without a second. So Auntie Matilda is busy formulating and evaluating hmm, and reviewing all her doings of her past life or lives or whatever the case might be hmm, and trying to take rebirth again trying to find the right channel the right genetic hmm, combination hmm, with which is structured in the DNA patterns etc 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 it's too busy to worry about you we're formulating its rebirth hmm? so those entities are in a certain stage uh, where there's no evolution, no progress, but only evaluation from which they proceed further to unfold themselves. Hmm? Remember, I've always said to you, our general banner, general title is the International Foundation for Spiritual Unfoldment and not spiritual development. You are fully spiritually developed people as you are. It's only these patternings, these veils, these clouds that must be dispersed and you shine in your prime, pristine, pure glory. And that comes from integration. Yeah. There's different spiritual groups are who are preparing uh, themselves for the so-called growth changes coming up, um, mm -hmm. storing foods and things like this. Can you address that subject a little bit? Uh, it seems like there's different schools of thought. Some yes, I know. I've been to someone's home who has uh, an whole garage full of boxes. Yeah that could last for a hundred years in case there's no food. Hmm? Oh, ye children of little faith. Hmm? Even before a child is born, divinity supplies milk in its mother's breast. Then who are you to provide for yourself? You are not. You are being provided for. Hmm? Circumstances will always come about hmm? where you will always have the provision that is required for you and by you, always. Hmm? And then you people say, we are Christians. Huh? And you know the story huh? of the bird of the air. Hmm? Hmm? And do you know that story from the Bible? How does it go? Tell me. Uh, I think it goes uh, to the effect that even our heavenly, uh, uh, are not the birds of the air and the lilies of the field provided for? Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not all the riches and wisdom of Solomon could produce such a lily. Huh? Mm -hmm. You see? So why worry these spiritual groups? Oh. You'll have all kinds of thoughts, you know. I picked up a tabloid newspaper in San Francisco. I had a lecture program there. And this tabloid, it had, I estimate, over 500 ads of these various spiritual groups with all kinds of different businesses, you know. Mm. And it's all covered up in beautiful language, very plausible meaning, nothing. What I say is just this, be yourself. You learn to integrate your mind, body and spirit in such a simple, systematic way of spiritual practices and all the happiness that you seek, all the joy you seek would be unfolded unto thee. A simple message of love and peace and joy. True, in India too, there's so many famines. Mm. We are provided for, by all means. 
but it is through conditionings and through the oppression of people of greed that have deprived those people even of basic necessities. Hmm? So we, the affluent society, are more guilty, more to blame for the happenings. Huh? Take India for example. Hmm? One of the richest countries in the world, it has all the mineral wealth. Hmm? And British, Britain ruled it for 300 years. Okay, and what did they do? Hmm? No progress whatsoever. They regarded India to be the sacred cow, milked it and sent the milk away to England. Hmm? And poverty remained. Fields were untilled. Hmm? Factories were not working. Poverty and hunger and famine. Hmm? It is because of the exploiters. Hmm? It's the exploiters that create these conditions. And those exploiters will suffer. They must. It's a law of cause and effect. Hmm? Uh, at the present moment, there are 1,3 million Indians. And I'm not speaking as an Indian, by the way. Hmm? I might have been born in India and brought up there. You know, I have no nationality. If you ask me, are you American? I say yes. If you ask me if you're English, I say yes. If you ask me if I'm German, I say yes. I'm a universalist. Hmm? Fine. Okay. One day I was joking with an Englishman, and we were talking of the population, that uh, with all the trouble in Uganda and in Kenya, a lot of the Indians had migrated to England. I say, uh, and at that time, this business of um, uh, Bangladesh was going on. Hmm? So I tell this English friend of mine, I say, you know, the name of England is going to be changed with all these Indians coming here. It's going to be called Angladesh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. And haven't we Americans also exploited? Haven't we? Can we be honest with ourselves? Hmm? Haven't we put those red Indians into reservations and grab their lands? Haven't we done it too? It's happening all the time. It's happening all the time. It is tragedy, it is regretful. And people that understand will understand. Those that want to hear will hear. Those that want to see will see. Yes. While you're thinking, let me see if I can't find another joke for you. <laughs> this person, this person was sending, this person was sending um, a parcel. And I had to go to the post office to post it. So the person in the post office behind the counter asked, uh, Sir, is there anything unbreakable, uh, is there anything breakable in here? So, being a Bible, this man said, yes, there is something breakable in there, the Ten Commandments. <laughs> I have a question about the, the hurt that comes with broken bones, or mm -hmm. a car accident, or those mm -hmm. kind of things. Mm -hmm. The kind of healing you're speaking of, will that mm -hmm. deal with those also? They will deal with it, but that naturally um, would take time to heal. There's no miracles, really. No miracles. It'll, it would take time to heal if you can draw sufficiently from that power or you have a spiritual master helping you, your pain could be greatly relieved. But then also there are certain laws of nature that has to be observed where a bone fracture would take a certain process in restructuring itself Hmm? But the process can be expedited hmm? painlessly. Hmm? So, even the pain becomes less if you learn through spiritual practices how to observe the pain. And the pain becomes less. And this can be achieved by the integration we reach through our practices. Yes, sir.
Aha, beautiful question. I not only had an open heart operation, I'm a diabetic, I've got to take uh, insulin injection every day and I've got cancer. Okay. The finest physicians in the world are surprised how I live. I was born with a congenital heart disease and I was supposed to be dead when I was 14, 15. And even today's doctors, they are surprised how I managed to live. And this is what I explained to them, that what you know of is physical energy. What do you know of is mental energy? Hmm? What do you know of spiritual energy? I can prolong this little body as long as I like, at will, or leave it at will, by spiritual energy. Yes. Now, why don't I cure myself of these things? Would be part of your question. Now, the reason is this. As soon as I start thinking of myself, I lose the spiritual force that flows through me. Because by thinking of myself, I build up that ego, where I become self-centered. I'm thinking of me, 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 my disease. So, if you study the lives of the greatest masters, hmm, in this turn of the century, like Raman Maharshi, he had cancer, Ramakrishna, he had cancer, uh, most of the greatest masters burned themselves out because they just give, give, give. Great man like Swami Vivekananda died at the age of 38, uh, Swami Ramtith at the age of 34, I think it was, hmm? and such a brilliant intellect, he was appointed professor of mathematics at the age of 22. Hmm? And like I could cite so many examples, because we do not care for ourselves. To me, this body means nothing. To me, this mind means nothing. Hmm? Because I've gone beyond the body and the mind. We were discussing with Mary Kay the other day. She's a wonderful cook, by the way. She does all the cooking. Mm. And even on courses when I hold them, some of you should really attend our courses because, you know, the sustained intensity of the course over a period of four or five days uh, builds up into such a beautiful thing that you would never come back the same person again. Mm. Right? And these people come to courses, they know. Mm. Right. Uh, I told her, that I never feel hungry. I never ever feel hungry. I only eat because I know the body has to be sustained. Hmm? I never try and remember things, only the bare necessities. Whatever I've spoken about tonight, I've forgotten already. I didn't know what I've spoken about tonight. I know it was, I have a dim awareness we spoke about health and holistic health, something like that. Hmm? That's all. It's only tomorrow, the day after, when I have a chance to listen to the tape. Mm, would I say, oh, did I speak about this? Oh, mm, not bad, not bad, it's all right. <laughs> you see, we don't care for ourselves, the physical body. It is none important because we know through spiritual force it can be extended indefinitely and we could go into Mahasamadhi. In one moment, just close your eyes, control the breath, and you discard this body. It's a piece of wood. Hmm? As I always say, what is this body worth? Huh? Hmm? What is this body made of? Nothing but filth and slime and dirt and shit and... Hmm? And its chemical value is only about a dollar. Perhaps you know, with inflation it might be one dollar fifty. So people that are on the spiritual path or that are true spiritual masters, 
never care for themselves. They, they are more outward going. They are more concerned with the joy and happiness and good health of others. So as soon as they start thinking of themselves, they would block that spiritual force from flowing through them. That's the reason. And yet I'm healthy and well, in spite of all this, these problems. Hmm? And ask them, this morning I went to bed at 5 o'clock. Hmm? Yesterday morning at 4 o'clock. The day before yesterday I went to bed at near 4 o'clock too. And do I seem tired at all to you? Huh? Fresh as the day is there. <laughs> hmm? Although I did have a bit of a rest this afternoon. Yeah. Hmm? Finally, a whole hour and a half at once. Yes. Yeah. Well, have a question. Hmm, please. I'm trying to point out one, and I'll just say it out. Mm -hmm. it out. Think aloud. I'll think aloud. Right. It's what you're saying about that utter devotion or selflessness um, seems inconsistent with the prospect that an individual can help himself mm -hmm. short of that mm -hmm. through spiritual practices, through meditation. Uh, the ideal you set in terms of selflessness mm -hmm. uh, won't reach 90%, won't reach enough of the population to get rid of 90% of True, that is very true. I do not say lose your individuality, hmm? but infuse the universality in your individuality. You see. I do not say, uh, do not think of yourself. Think of your well-being. Think of your family. Think of your needs, uh, because you are not what I am. My role, my mission in life is different. Hmm? What I could say to you would be, look after yourself. If you have a house with five rooms, why not have ten rooms? Hmm? Get a bigger, better house. If you've got five million in the bank, why not have ten million? Hmm? But what is the motivation? That's important. What is the motivation? Hmm? Is it a sense of just acquisitiveness? Is it greed? Or is it a gathering for something good? That is important. Hmm? I believe in abundance. Have abundance. Hmm? But not only material abundance, but the abundance of that spiritual joy, and let it be infused in each other. Hmm? Regard everything to be divine. Hmm? This table is divine, this chair is divine, you are divine. And if you examine it carefully, it's the same, it contains the same atoms and the same molecular structures that makes it into what it is. Hmm? And even this piece of wood here as consciousness, yours might be more evolved. No difference. It is all but one. Yeah. If God is one and He is omnipresent, hmm, then everything is but div divine, everything is divinity. <laughs>